because it's been a hell of a year and it's only July. My name is Isabella and this is my story. I mostly keep the finer details of my life and health private, but I saw something recently that really upset me. And it made me want to speak about my experiences. There, there's this subreddit that um, takes people who talk about having chronic illness online and dissects them and calls them fakers with mental cousins. Um, as someone who worked in medicine for three years in a hospital and who was chronically ill themselves, this really upsets me. I can never judge another person based off of the small snippets you see of their lives. So I figured I may as well share my story and how I got to where I am today. up, my lungs and digestive issues were the main problems I had. I, I had my gallbladder removed when I was 13. Uh, it, it had nearly ruptured, and I had emergency surgery to have it removed. Um, keeping down food cured other digestive issues and things like that have been a problem ever since then. Um, and as for my lungs, I have had severe asthma my entire life and when I was 15 I had three pulmonary lacerations because of a bad asthma attack that was caused by a reaction to my allergy shots I was having at the time. For the, for, for the most part though I was able to be a fairly active kid. I, I did martial arts for 16 years, worked on the farm, and later on, I did theater, which is more physically intensive than you think it is. All the while, I just kind of dealt with the issues I had because I couldn't get the support that I needed from my parents at the time. Uh, being a homeschooled preacher's kid, I didn't really have many people I could reach out to either. Then I started college. Sixteen and seventeen, respectively. I, I was finding out what was normal and what wasn't, both in regards to how I was being treated uh, by my family and my own physical health. The theater in college helped me have the confidence to come out as pan and experiment with my gender identity. Of course, my family didn't know this. Once again, preacher's kid. <laughs> um, in 2020, year of the pandemic, I left my community college for a four-year university. I had gotten my associate's degree and was ready to move on to the next step. In 2021, I started working at the hospital that was connected to that university. I wanted to help people. Um, this was during the peak of the pandemic, the Delta variant and all that. I worked there for three years. I got COVID three times in the span of about a year and a half. Um, I loved my job though. I really did. It was everything to me. I was homeless and staying with someone when I was still on orientation, but it, it's what gave me the confidence and financial security to finally be able to leave an abusive home. 
after I got COVID the first time, I was a lot more low on energy, but I was still able to work and push through it. Then I got COVID for the second time. Um, not long after that, I uh, had I was sent to the ER uh, twice in the middle of shifts, once in October of. Uh, 2021 and once in January of 2022. Um, <clears throat> uh, the first time is because well, both times my heart rate was in the 200s. Um, the first time was when the medical emergency team took me down because um, it wasn't even showing numbers anymore. It just showed two plus signs, which means it was above 250 beats per minute um, for my heart rate. The other time it was it was in the lower 200s. This was the first signs uh, that were showing that that something was wrong. Unfortunately, during this time, I had also sunk into a very bad depression. So I didn't prioritize my health and mostly just ignored the problem. I got COVID a third time though, and that started setting me on a very serious decline. It was also towards the end of December 2022 that I fully realized I was trans and started transitioning, uh, fully coming out as a trans woman in March of 2023. Um, as a side note, that is also around when I was diagnosed with an audio processing disorder. The first time I used a mobility aid was in May of 2023. Uh, I was at a convention in Atlanta, and I physically could not keep walking, e even though I tried. I, I did end up in the ER during that vacation at Emory. Uh, for an unrelated infection, but I'm, I'm sure the infection wasn't helping with the energy. Um, I had just recently before that gotten my Cox diagnosis. Um, that's postural orthostatic tachycardia syndrome. Uh, it, it basically means my body has a hard time regulating my blood pressure, especially when changing positions. Uh, it can be affected by things like heat, dehydration, and lack of sodium. I did start using a wheelchair or cane on and off starting in late summer 2023 uh, as a lot of very serious joint pain was popping up, which at the time I simply blamed on doing martial arts for too long. I mean, I, I constantly was twisting my ankle as a kid, so surely it was just something in the same minor vein. For a while, I was doing a lot better. Uh, I was on a beta blocker and was taking sodium bath outs two grams three times a day. But if you remember talking about if you remember me talking about those uh, GI symptoms a minute ago, well, they started getting a lot worse in late 2023 and early 2024. I, I started having these horrible flares for for weeks at a time where I would be done absolutely nothing. I, I couldn't stay hydrated. And that led to my POTS symptoms getting worse, causing syncope uh, concerningly often. Uh, I, I was admitted to the hospital for around a week in February of 2024 uh, because I was dehydrated and my electrolytes, specifically my potassium and magnesium, were very low. They, they kept me until I started being able to keep food down again and sent me on my way. They never really figured out what was happening to me though. Then I was in the ER around eight more times for dehydration before the next time I was admitted. Um, it was in April, I think. Uh, on, honestly, the whole year has started to be a blur for me. Uh, regardless, I stayed for two weeks. Uh, I, I was never able to keep food down the entire time. Um, I was <clears throat> getting fairly
are convinced that I have gastric paresis. Um, the uh, hospitalist doctors ordered a gastric lymph field study on me. It was um, somewhat inconclusive. Uh, later on, after my hospital stay, uh, when talking with a GI specialist, we did conclude that I do have gastroparesis left. Um, but anyway, I, I was never able to keep food down the entire time I was in the hospital for the full two weeks. Uh, they were giving me chicken broth and I was just throwing it right back up. It was weird and tasted horrible and it honestly looked like I could have just thrown it back up into the bowl and no one would have known any different. Eventually, they put an NJ tube, uh, a, a type of feeding tube, down my nose. It uh, didn't go into my stomach, because that's where the problem was. It went into my uh, jejunum, which is uh, part of your intestines. Uh, one of the first parts of your intestines past your stomach. Um, and eventually, I have a GJ tube placed, uh, and that's a type of feeding tube that goes directly into uh stomach, or in this case, my stomach for the G gastric and uh, in my intestines for the J genome, and uh, I still have it right here. Lovely little thing. I'm actually getting it swapped out for a uh, low profile version on the 22nd of this month, which I'm looking forward to because that means uh, I will have more clothing options available to me. Um, I love corsetry. And I, I haven't been able to wear corsets since I've had this. Um, and I'm hoping that the low profile one I'd be able to wear a corset again. Um, <coughs> between those hospital visits though, some, something important happened. Uh, I managed to get in with a sports medicine doctor. He diagnosed me with hypermobility syndrome and is currently screening me for Ehlers-Danlos syndrome, which is a connective tissue disorder syncope, like hypnosis, and joint instability had gotten to the point where I was using mobility aids more often than not. I, I actually missed my second physical therapy session because I was in the hospital with the uh, nausea vomiting. Um, I also managed to graduate between those two hospital stays as well. Um, I, I also had another hospital stay recently because my uh, GJ tube actually ruptured and I had to get a new one placed. <laughs> um, thankfully they were able to place it on the same track, but yeah. Um, but I was dealing with all of this while also dealing with some very serious mental health concerns as well. I had depression, CPTSD, anxiety disorder, and ADHD. And while all it is more neurological and doesn't, isn't super distressing to me, may as well mention, I have Tourette's as well. Uh, right after my three-year anniversary uh, at work in April of 2024, when all of this started happening to such an extreme, uh, I ended up taking medical leave. Only the paperwork ended up getting messed up, and I wasn't able to get my return to work form submitted in time. Yet they were still writing me up for the days I missed, even though they would not let me go to work. This culminated without with um, at the start of this month, after I thought my health couldn't take any more from me. I was asked to leave my position or be fired on the 2nd of July. was absolutely devastated. I had given this hospital everything I had. I started working there in the middle of a fucking pandemic because I knew people needed help and I wanted to help them. And I, I knew the risk as much as I could at the time before long COVID was common knowledge. I, I, I gave everything to that job. My free time, my health, my relationships, all came in second place to the job where I got to help people. 
I loved it so much. My turn to be helped, and my cow is still on deaf, deaf ears. The job that got me out of being homeless, got me through my degree, it gave me friends and a place to belong. Hell, the unit Christmas photo is part of the lock screen on my computer. I belonged somewhere. felt like I had already lost everything. I lost it too. Without insurance, without a job, I'm not sure I'm going to be able to make it through to the end of the year. If I have another bad glare and I can't afford to pay for my tube feedings out of pocket, I'm royally fucked. I, I have been trying to find jobs I'm physically able to do, but no one ever seems to get back to me. I'm on 21 dating my occasions just to try and function, and soon I might not be able to afford any of them. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's the story of my health. My plans for the future. Medical school, DEI masters, researching. It has all never felt so far away. At least I have my wonderful partners, one of which I'm engaged to, and an amazing crown family. Thank you for listening to me ramble.